UFC Fight Night, Moreno, Albazi. Welcome, everybody. Andy and Jim, happy Halloween. And we are going to break down every fight. No time to waste, Jim. Here we go. Uh, go ahead and tell me stop. Stop. Oh, a tough word. Tough word. All right, here's the deal. One. Leave a comment in the comment section. Give me your best bet for uh, for this card. If you don't have a hot take and you just want to help the algorithm out, type the word lose in the, in the comment section. Oh, I hope that's not a side of thing to come. Things oh, like our hindsight haters are going to love this one. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, yeah, so that's how it works. Uh, that's the that's a code word of the day. Just leave that in the comment section. All right, let's get right into it, Jim, here. Jack Shore. Yusef Zalal. Um, sometimes when these guys come get cut from UFC and they come back, it doesn't go well. Mm -hmm. This one seems to be going pretty well. Uh, does he continue it? Zalal has looked really, really good. You could certainly make the case with maybe a too, little bit too young when they brought him in. Uh, what's your take on Jack Shore and Yusef Zalal? Uh, Jack Shore, to me, is just always going to be at a disadvantage at this weight class. He's not a physically imposing fighter. His skill level's great. He's good everywhere. But the problem is he's just good everywhere. Uh, to me, there's nothing that he excels in and is above... Uh, a top 10 level of fighter. Uh, I think if you put him against anybody in the top 15, top 10, he's going to have a rough go of it. Uh, Zalal seems to be like he's really turned a corner. And I like this Zalal that we've seen. The thing I like the most about this Zalal, since he's been back, he's done it every single way that you can. He's really rounded out everything in his game. We've seen the wrestling. We've seen the striking. We've seen him be defensively sound. We've seen him uh, use cage control as well and really just control every ounce of these fights, his submission game. So I just don't know if we're going to see too much diversity on the feet from shore. I don't think he can really hang and out point. Um, I like Zalal. I don't love the number. I think he is parlayable. I really like this fight to go the distance. I don't think either guy gets finished in this fight. This could be a really, really easy decision win here. Yeah. You know, we were, we've had a good read on Jack Shore. I, we, I think we've correctly predicted his mm -hmm. two losses, the only two of his career. Uh, we predicted him that he wasn't going to be able to deal with uh, Ricky Simone. And it turned out, you know, that was the case. He does get the nice win against Miracani. The weirdest, one of the weirder stoppages you'll ever see cut on a shin. Mm -hmm. What was it getting in his eye? What, what, what's, what's going on there? Um, but he was losing, but he was getting his, he was kind of getting yeah. his ass kicked. So I'm with you. I, I got to buy into Zalal. I, he just looks good. He's got a really nice confidence about him. He's been imposing. Um, I just, before everyone's like, oh man, what a domination of Billy Q. Billy Q was hurt. So yes, like, we throw that one out for the record. <laughs> Billy Q was hurt. Um, mm -hmm. But we kind of like uh, Jarno Aaron's, but it gives a lot of credit to complete advantage of Aaron's lack of ground game. And I think that's what happens here is a law just it's going to be too big. I just don't see where Jack Shore has the bigger moments. I think it's a law. So mm -hmm. you're right. It's got to be a parlay piece. Not much you can do with minus 258. And I, I you can't take decision. Uh, you can't take inside the distance. I don't find any value on those. So um, so all is a parlay piece. Jamie Lynn Horth against Ivana Petrovic. We got uh, first Canadian. On the card here, uh, the last time I was in Canada, it didn't go well for the Canadian men. Went great for the Canadian women, yes. but it did not go well for the for the Canadian. Um, I will just say this: I this is probably going to be my woulda, coulda, shoulda. Like I'm never comfortable laying minus two hundred five on Jamie Lynn Horth, but Petrovic is not good. Um, yes. I, there, this is this is a seven and one that whoa, I mean is losing to Na Liang at parts in the first round, but then Na Liang does her thing and gets tired uh, late. She loses to, to a lot of Carolina. And then before that, I mean, she's fighting and, you know, Aries and I would, you just do the eye test. Jamie Lynn Horth is going to be more physical. She's going to mm -hmm. be more imposing a close split decision against a Veronica Hardy, who has improved a lot, who has an incredible camp and yes. incredible people working with her. And she made pretty quick, not quick work, but pretty convincing win over uh, Haley Cohen, Dana White's uh, favorite. So I, I think this line's actually a little short. I am happy to take Jamie Lynn Horth in a fight that I just don't see Petrovic being able to be strong enough to get out of some of the clinch and the forward pressure. What do you think? 
I can't agree more. Uh, oh, just, just nothing from Ivana that we spoke earlier in the week about this fight. You mentioned how you felt about it. I went back and looked at it, and I don't see much firepower coming the way of Ivana. Like, what is she going to do to really hurt Jamie in this fight? Or uh, it just like you said, bigger, more physical, imposing figure is going to be Jamie Lynn Horth. And I kind of wonder if Jamie Lynn was signed as almost a bit of a throwaway. And this is kind of a situation where they look and say, wait a minute, we might have actually found something with this fighter. We can put her on a Canada card. We can market her. She does come forward and cause a bit of a car crash. She could be a good fighter. So throwing her a seven in one fighter who's unimproven on her home soil, I have to think that the UFC is pushing Jamie Lynn in this spot. So uh, I think the stars align here. I agree with you, man. I, we might find our way onto Jamie Lynn here in some form or fashion. For the record, myself, Jim, and Corbin were going back and forth on Slack. There is not a whole lot we agree on. <laughs> no. So I got flip flopped uh, on this one. Yeah, yeah. I but on a card where there could be a lot of like, mm -hmm. there, where there could be a lot of fights. Where like, oh, someone thinks this, but someone thinks this. Maybe the value is in some of these lower fights to start the card. Maybe get your profits and then get out of there. I don't know. Uh, Chad and Hellinger and uh, our boy Cody Gibson. Uh, who do you like in this one? I'm not betting on Cody Gibson. <laughs> uh, very, very short list of fighters that you could put go to Cody Gibson in the cage with where I would lay minus 192 on Cody Gibson. Very, very short list. I understand that he's going to be bigger. I understand that Chad is not the best fighter in the world. But let's be real. Cody Gibson's not either. This submission over Kelleher, you remember that fight? I do. I went about, back and watched About, it. what, 35 seconds into that fight, we said, oh, no, Brian, this is not. Yeah, Keller's done. He was done. He was absolutely done, phoned in, you know, not healthy, not ready to go. And Chad's not that guy. He is a younger, physical, ready-to-rock fighter here coming into his prime. So I think he can cause some problems with Cody. What we've seen with Cody is that his chin is not there as much anymore. I, I think he could still hang with the wrestling Chad can. And Chad kind of keeps a really good even pace. So if we see Cody slow down and not be able to get the wrestling off, I kind of like Chad in the spot. I'll take the plus money on Al and Helliger. Another fight that I like to go the distance. Uh, that was my note as well. Take it to go the distance. <laughs> these guys are pretty even. Um, I mean, you make the case that both these guys got – not got bailed out, but kind of saved their careers, prolonged them a little bit with their last win. Like, mm -hmm. And Helliger was – if he loses this one, he's done. Like he's probably not getting another one. And you look at Cody Gibson and it's kind of the same thing. You don't win this one. You're, you're done. I think whoever loses this one is done. Uh, mm -hmm. So I think it goes the distance. I don't see finishing ability from either one of these guys against the other one. If anyone could get a finish, maybe it's Cody Gibson just because of the size advantage. I just don't think he's got that in him because, and Helliger's not going to show up like Kelleher and, and kind no. of give up, give up no. mode. It's going to be, it's going to be a nonstop three rounds, you know, kind of pushing the pace. Uh, he's obviously going to be slower. He's 37. He's going to be slower the longer the fight goes. But, um, yeah, I, I have this one circled as a fight to go over. I really don't care who wins. Sir, he's City and Garrett Armfield. Interesting on your take on this one. Who do you like? I'm kind of torn on this. I, I flip pretty much every day. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm not a huge Garrett Armfield fan. I'm most certainly not a City fan. Uh, we made money on City on Contender Series when he got the knockout of Tavares. And in the rematch, we expected him to do better. He was winning that fight, and he looked horrible against Ramon Tavares. I mean, maybe that shot on Contender was a lucky shot. I just got to throw it out there. Uh, I don't think that City's wrestling is great. On the same token, I don't really know if Armfield is going to be able to capitalize on this. We've seen both of these guys make big mistakes. Um, I don't really value Brady high stand at all. So to have a loss against Brady and get the fight in the only situation where Brady could win and just show horrible IQ... I can't back either of these guys and I can't back to go the distance because somebody could make an egregious mistake here. So I have no bets on this. If I had to pick a money line, I'm going to take city just because I've seen the bigger 
error in fight game plan from Armfield. That's the only reason. Other than that, I am not betting this fight. I'm interested in what you got here. City! No, that's, uh, if, if you don't know what that is, that's what Jalen Rose would always call Stefan Marbury because he would go out and party too much nights before games. <laughs> Did you know that? No, but I know about Stefan Marbury. Yeah. And you're yes. right. <laughs> so Jalen Rose would always go, whenever he'd be mentioned, mm-hmm. Jalen Rose would go, City! Starbury uh, has graced many a club in my area yeah. in New Jersey, trust me. Um, I have Armfield. Uh, and I'll gladly take the plus money. Um, bad, bad fight IQ and bad decisions can absolutely follow somebody around. Other times you make a mistake and you learn from it. I'm going to roll the dice that Armfield learned from his gigantic mistake against Heisen. It was literally a mistake that his fight went from a win to a mm-hmm. loss. And not only did it go from win to a loss, it went from a KO win to a submission loss. Like, it was yes. the worst thing. What, what he did, if you don't remember, it was the third round, close round. He clocks Heiston mm-hmm. on, the, on the feet. Heiston is out and falls down. Yes. All Armfield has to do <laughs> is take two steps back and go stand up, and I don't even know if Heiston could. Mm-hmm. And if he did stand up, Armfield was going to just absolutely – flatten him with a couple shots instead armfield jumps on top of him the only place the heiston can recover and get the win um armfield gasses himself heiston gets the choke a, a good great performance against katona who's mm-hmm. you know veteran who will push you for three rounds does what he's supposed to do against kazama which is you know get the knockout loses to david nama in his debut like Not short sure. notice mm-hmm. um so uh city um you said it man we were really confident in him against Tavares, and he gets the flash KO. You're right. Maybe it was just a one lucky shot because, you know, he outlanded Tavares, but the bigger shots and the damage was just no contest. It went to, uh, you know, Tavares. I was actually kind of surprised it was a split. Mm-hmm. Um, but he he was all busted up and bloodied up. He looked, he, looked, he looked terrible. It's arm field for me. I don't think he makes the same mistake twice. And let's say he does – let's say he does – Flatten city and jump on top of him. City's not the, the, the grappler and the submission guy that no. I stand is. So I have Armfield in this one at plus money. If you're looking if you're looking for underdogs, you could do a lot worse than Garrett Armfield on this card for sure. <laughs> Alexander Romanoff and Rodrigo Nascimento. God help you if you put money on this fight. Um uh, <laughs> Jim, <laughs> what are your thoughts on these two? Well, what is our rule with Alexander Romanoff? You bet against him. <laughs> uh, no, no, you wait let's to go see, back a ways. You wait to see what he looks like the week of weigh-ins, and then you lie. Not the week. Him. No, no, no. The day as after. he walks to the scale, you have to see what he looks like. Okay, all right. Because Photoshop is a beautiful thing. Everybody can adjust pictures. We can adjust lighting. I can make it look oh, like I'm man. shredded with a couple light bulbs. Until we see this man on the scales, we have no idea what shape he is coming in as. If he comes in as thin fit Romanoff, I'm betting Romanoff. If he comes in like the Pillsbury Doughboy that he has his past two fights, I am unloading on Nascimento. Because we have seen this man quit and give up the second that he has to dig for cardio and things do not go his way. So the thing is, I think Nascimento is going to accept, accept bottom. So either way, how this fight goes, I would almost wait maybe a minute. You might be able to steal a better line. But if we get a decent looking Romanoff, I think people should be very afraid uh, because Nascimento is not a great heavyweight. He just isn't. And we don't want to make him all of a sudden become this great heavyweight that we all think he can be. He is what he is. He's 11 and two, but it's not a really a murderer's row of opponents here. He beat a dog. He lost to a Dawkins. Dante Mays, Tanner Bozer, Ilir Latifi, Dante Mays again. And then he beats, uh, loses to Derek Lewis, gets absolutely flatlined where we, I was all over Lewis in that fight. So I think we wait and see if it scales. If we get fat Roman off, I will be all over Nascimento. And I don't think this fight goes the distance. I think. Romanov will quit or he will pound Nascimento through the canvas. That is the only two ways I can see this fight going. Yeah. Romanov has talked about having some pretty big issues outside of the cage. I, I don't know what they are, but mm-hmm. he was pretty open. He was in a very, 
very tough spot. And for that reason, I just don't know what to do with this guy. So you're right. Just wait, wait and see what he's going to look like as he's walking out. And, and then he's a great live bet. Yeah. You're going to know immediately. Um, it's just, it's just, hopefully the books don't quite catch up. Um, mm-hmm. but yeah, there's no play for me before. It just depends on what Romanoff we're getting. Cause Nascimento, I will, you know, Nascimento, he was on top of Derek Lewis early and mm-hmm. just couldn't sustain it throughout. And just, you know, Derek Lewis, we'll talk about later. It's just got KO power for all three rounds. So, um, if right. Romanoff shorts don't fit, bet the house on Nascimento. <laughs> all right. If you watch it walk out and his shorts don't fit. <laughs> Oh, uh, absolutely. Absolutely. So, uh, real quick, guys, what do we have up this week? Well, it's a huge week uh, mm-hmm. this weekend. 5% college football play and 5% UFC play. That is up. Uh, what we did was we did, uh, we're going to do a promo code. Just use the promo code Andy3. It gets a three day pass for 39 bucks. Absolute no brainer. A 5% yes. play is $35. Mm-hmm. So, three day pass. This will get you every play for the weekend. And that includes Formula One and NFL. Uh, we are up. Uh, <laughs> We're up really nice, man. 161 units, uh, and we're six and one just to start this week. Mm-hmm. So the week is off to a great start, and we're setting up for a big, big weekend. So there's no reason to not <laughs> get the three day pass. Um, it re- like I was kind of calculating it up. It's over 100 bucks just to get all the plays that we have up for this weekend. So you're getting it for 39 dollars. We are the number two handicapper for units gained this year. And uh, we're coming off of a beautiful winning week last week. We're on a nice run in UFC, 25 and 15. We're one of those six and two in our last eight big bets uh, in UFC over the last three months. And college football, 20 and six lifetime and seven and two this year. And we've hit our 5% play last week. So uh, there, it's a it's a three-day pass promo code Andy3. That's by far the best way to take advantage and uh, build the bankroll for this weekend. Uh, Charles Jordan and Victor Henry. My God, this was the fight. I I have I have no idea. I oh, literally, this is great. I have no do idea. I. <laughs> what what do you do? With, what do you do with um, these two guys? You got Charles Jordan, who's apparently going to starve himself uh, to try and he, try and make that. You got Victor Henry, who's all volume and no power. Mm-hmm. He, it took him three rounds to knock out Ronnie Yaya, which I think would take you one round. Uh, to knock out Ronnie Yaya. I, I I have no, I can't tell you a total because Charles Jordan could go the distance or he could get flatlined in the first. Mm-hmm. Victor Henry is going to throw 200 strikes. Who knows how many of them is going to land. I, I have no idea. I would be happy to just not do anything with this fight and move on. What do you think? I thought Victor Henry looked absolutely horrible <laughs> against. He did. He was horrible yeah. against Ronnie Yaya. Like horrible. And, and look, this was the one note that I had on this fight. Charles Jordan is what he is. Okay. Sometimes he's going to impress you. And then other times he's going to come out and look absolutely lost <laughs> in the cage. That's what he is. Okay. We've established that. Victor Henry, that night against Ronnie Barcelos. Uh, let's stop talking about it. Like enough. It's the only time that he's come out. And looked like a UFC level world beater. And everyone was shocked and amazed by it because it was Ronnie Barcelos. And where did this come from? And blah, blah, blah. And it's been fool's gold ever since. He was losing the fight to Basharat. I didn't think he looked great against Gravely at all. Uh, a Sun Sao? Come on. That's not a credible win in 2022. The guy has not looked the same as that Barcelos fight. And I think that we're starting to see the fact that he might be a little bit of a fraud here. I don't think his game planning is fantastic. A lot of people talk about his ground game. We never see him be able to actually control and dominate a fight convincingly. So to me, you go with the plus money in this. Unfortunately, I don't trust either guy. I don't trust it to go the distance. This is Jordan's backyard coming off a loss. I don't know, man. I have no bet on this fight. To me, there's so many better spots on this card than this sketchy two guys that we cannot trust fight. That's why I left it off. Yeah, don't bet this one. Ariane Lipsky and Jasmine. Jasmine DeVicius. Floor is yours. What do you think? Is this the time where Lipsky is going to get a little bit exposed? Hmm. I think she's had very good matchups on this run that she's on. Okay. They haven't been... 
juggernaut wrestlers. Uh, there's been some wrestling. You're not going to see wrestling from Cachoeira. JJ is extremely limited physically. Uh, Melissa Gatto, we've seen, can be hot and cold. I still think Gatto won that fight as well. Uh, the Casey O'Neill fight was Casey's return. Yeah. Right? So that Pretty was the sure. return off the knee injury. And then once you threw her in against somebody who was legit, uh, it was pretty much. I'm oh, sorry. It was Maya. Maya was her return. Lipsky, oh, Maya was her return. Okay. Lip, Lipsky was after. Lipsky was second. Um, once you threw her in there against Silva. Uh, look, Karina Silva didn't look great, but she still had enough to win a unanimous decision. Jazz DeVicius, if she gets on top, will not let her back up. We've seen the wrestling. We've seen vicious ground and pound. I think this girl is coming to her own. I expect a physicality advantage for Jazz. And Calypsi's kind of lost what brought her to the dance. I don't see the violence anymore. I don't see the aggressiveness pushing forward. It's She's more of a stick and move fighter. I don't think she reacts well. Jazz is becoming quite a mean girl in there. And as you guys know, I love betting on mean girls in the octagon. Mm-hmm. You got to show me as a women's fighter that you're willing to get somebody out of there. You have my interest. So I like Jazz in this spot. Home cooking as well. Cards built around her uh, as one of the top Canadians. She's probably one of what? The top four Canadians in MMA right now? Top five? Probably. Right? Yeah. It's, there's not a right. deep list. Yeah. So I think this is kind of a setup to get Jazz a good win here. I think she's going to take out Lipsky uh, either by decision or in late stoppage. Hmm. I'm on the fence. I, w- I watched Lipsky upset Gatto. Mm-hmm. Um, I watched her beat Casey O'Neill when everyone was picking Casey O'Neill. Um, it, this was the right decision against Silva. You know, Lipsky just couldn't he, she couldn't sustain it. I, I thought Silva. I thought that was more of a wow. Silva looks great as opposed to Lipsky looks looks bad here. Um, if I'm trying to poke holes in Jasmine, what I'm going to say is. Dominate Miranda Maverick. I poke Miranda Maverick mm-hmm. openly talked about. Uh, Tracy Cortez. <laughs> okay. All right. Wins, uh, loses. Like, that's not not great. Um, gets the Darce choke against Priscilla and then beats uh, Klein in Klein's UFC debut. So I could say it's not exactly a huge gauntlet of, mm-hmm. uh, of, of wins here. Um, I will lean Jasmine, but I will tell you, I love this one to go the distance. I think both have exceptional cardio to go all three. And I know, I, I, I know Jasmine is, is well, you know, could get the submission. I don't know. Is Lipsky really going to be submitted? You know, when she, when she lost to Silva, it was a decision. When she lost cash where it was a, it was a KO, you know, when she lost way back when ground and pound, ground and pound. And I, I don't think she gets ground and pound, not in these gloves. Um, mm. So I, I I can already tell you disagree with <laughs> with with that with the that's just this, that's this card for us man it's it's hard for everybody to get on the same page um, I understand everything you're saying I just worry that uh, Lipsky is going to be a fish out of water and I, I, with the gloves yes but when you're talking about a wrestler with ground and pound elbows are coming and we've seen Jazz use the elbows so. Is this the fight where everybody says, yeah, it should go the distance and we have a cut stoppage? Like, no. I'm not saying knockout. Do I think yeah. she knocked her out? Hell no. She's no, not no. knocking her out on the feet. Um, but do we have that mercy stoppage? I I, I don't. I don't yeah, I think you're getting a mercy stoppage on Lipsky. I, I just, and on, on the feet, I, I like Lipsky's jabs. I like her movement. I think she can piece her up. Jasmine's going to have to close the distance, clinch, wrestle, get it to the ground on the feet. I think Jasmine's going to be asking for trouble. I know she's going to want to push forward. She gets a little too overzealous in front of her home crowd. I've watched Lipsky upset people before. Mm -hmm. so. um, But in the end, I'm not going to be betting my hard-earned money on it. So I guess that's the biggest biggest takeaway. (laughs) When I make the pick for this fight, my money will not be involved. Mm -hmm. Zahabi and Pedro Munoz. Um, Zahabi coming off the, uh, the, the kind of the funny win. (laughs) <laughs> against against Bosch Rod. like it's always funny when a real cocky fighter gets humbled. Um, mm-hmm. So, but I, listen, the hobby four wins in a row you can't take that away from him. Not against the greatest, but that win against Bosch Rod was pretty good. You could make the case Bosch Rod kind of handed it to him there by mm-hmm. getting cocky and uh, you know not really you know taking advantage. But I guess my question where I'll start off is what is Pedro Munoz's upside these days? Does he have any? 
I, 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 no, <laughs> does, I, does that statement sum yeah. it up right there? Like he the doesn't fact- have any upside. His he's arms just, are too short. He can't get inside. He doesn't have the power. What what's he? His what way to he? win fights is going to be the volume to a decision, and it just hasn't been working. Is the problem? He beat Jimmy I, I Rivera and, and Chris option. Gutierrez in a fight. Chris Gutierrez yeah. was open that I blew it. Like, oh, he blew it all right. He blew it. He blew yeah. it all right. I I. I understand everything you're saying. This is the lowest level opponent that Pedro has fought in a long time. Okay. All right. That you have me at. <laughs> like it's, I, I kind of feel that this is a bit of a discount on Pedro. You know, these losses don't reflect how good Pedro is as far as a well-rounded skill set. I mean, go down that list. I know they're losses, but... Champion Jose contender, Aldo, Dominic Cruz, champion, Vera. champion contender, yeah, champion. Uh, Kyler Phillips. We just main saw him fraud checked. Yeah, main event fighter though. <laughs> <laughs> In the main event, um, uh, co-main, co-main, but but the point remains the same. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I think this is going to be Pedro by decision. This, uh, I don't see the knockout from Zahabi happening. Pedro is notoriously impossible to finish. Uh, it's, I'm hoping it's Pedro by decision. I would love to see Pedro get a win because he's really just had a tough couple years here. Uh, and I don't know if Zabi is a hobby is as invested. He, he doesn't fight a whole lot. No, it's like so, one a year for seven years or something yes, crazy yes. like that. Um, he does not need the money. <laughs> TriStar Clearly. makes both of them plenty of money. TriStar gym. Um, so it's more of just, you know, I want to keep fighting and stay active to an extent. Uh, I'm rooting for Pedro. All right. Uh, if you're not taking overs as a parlay mm-hmm. piece, I don't know. Really, I don't know what you're doing. I, I seriously don't know what you're doing. So uh, Mike Malott and Trevin Giles. Um, I, I guess I, I guess I didn't realize that he hadn't fought anybody since the, the Carlos uh, Prada's mm-hmm. fight. So uh, you got Mike Malott, who was the ultimate absolute bed shitter in, in, in the last Canadian card where he's beating Neil Magny easily. And oops, I forgot to manage. All I needed was two minutes of cardio at the end. And I, I had nothing. Um, absolutely murdered everyone's parlays. Surely he's learned from that, right? I'm just, I can still taste that plus 600 Neil Magny after round one. What a beautiful, <laughs> beautiful bet. That was the Mike Malott questions. Look, if he isn't fixed the cardio, what the hell are we doing here? Uh, I hope it doesn't change his style. I want him to still come out and be that dominating, marauding fighter in the first round, but then have the ability to say, wait a minute, it's not happening. Let's reset. Let's adjust halfway through the round. Uh, I think the UFC is really serving him up somebody that he can beat. Uh, We've seen Trevin Giles decline. You know, you have to remember when you're breaking down these fights that you you have to take your, your memory and your feelings and your experience with these fighters from three, four, five years ago and throw it away because they're not the same fighter anymore. We can't look back at the Morales and Duplices and Delize and they, it's a different fighter now. And if we go back and look at his last two fights, he gets finished by Bonfim, who we've seen be a gas bag. He was able to beat him. Uh, we've seen Prades just losing the fight, but have the death touch the first time he touched him. Here's the interesting thing. Look at that right there. Mike Malott grappling. That's interesting. So they have had their hands on each other before. That's very important, guys. It's very important. He lost a decision in grappling. That's obviously not where you can punch and kick and yada, yada, yada. Uh, But that's a big thing for Mike Malott, knowing that he's already beat this gentleman in a grappling match, knowing that what he can and cannot do with his jiu-jitsu. Malott's jiu-jitsu is... Some of the best, some of the absolute best, super dangerous, great squeeze. It all comes down to the cardio. So if you like him a lot, I think you take him early and you make sure that you have that button on Trevin Giles if you have to hit it and get out of this bet. But I will be picking Mike Malott to get the finish on Trevin Giles. I think Giles is towards the end of his career. Yeah, I agree. He showed pretty good striking against Protez. He did damage to Protez. That was Protez's very first fight mm-hmm. in the UFC. And he was obviously clearly nervous and then bang, he hits Giles one time. <laughs> Giles is unconscious and Protez all of a sudden is not apparently not nervous anymore in the UFC. Cause he's gone on a, 
on a tear. I'm with you that Malat probably much safer this time because that was just such a classic Neil Magny <laughs> fight. Just cardio all day. Like somehow it's still alive at the third round. Finishes a, finishes Malat. Um, and Giles just isn't that guy, I, especially on the ground. I just don't think so. So I will go with Malat. Haven't put in a parlay. I have not bet it yet. Take that for what it's worth. Um, we move on to Mark Andre mm-hmm. Barrio and Dustin Stoltzfus. Uh, we we're just now learning. At least I was just now learning about the injuries that Stoltzfus had in his last, after his last fight against Bruno Ferreira. Absolutely disgusting. Nerve damage in his face. And this was just in June. Um, yeah, you and I are definitely not uh, Dustin Stoltzfus fans. I mean, beating Dwight Grant and <laughs> Soriano. My bankroll is. I mean, I, I love a Dustin Stoltzfus. Fight. Yeah, I mean, losing to a Kyle <laughs> Dawkins. I mean, the whole thing about this guy, he made it from contender series into the UFC because Joe Pfeiffer's arm broke mm-hmm. when he, like, okay, you get credit. He did slam him down. Come on. How many slams are there where arms don't break? Like, he, you know. So how they how have how have they not remade that match? By I the was way? just gonna bring that. How up. Have they? How I don't know Dana what they're not, waiting for. <laughs> what are you waiting for? So, um, yeah, Stoltzfus, uh, no way. And I, the other thing I would bring up about his last fight against Bruno Fer is like, for the first like one minute, if you'd never watched MMA for the first minute, you're like, damn, this Stoltzfus guy can strike. Mm-hmm. Then he gets Ferreira down. Somehow Ferreira looks like the better wrestler. That was the disturbing part. Stands okay, up yeah. and Stoltzfus has no cardio. It's still in the first round. Now, Ferreira was exhausted <laughs> as well. It's like, is this the fifth round of a main event? No, it's the first round. Mm-hmm. Um, so Stoltzfus gets absolutely obliterated. Uh, this guy is a bet against if I've ever seen it. I'm, I'm sure you're on the same page with me. Yeah, he's he, he's been up there with my my Jordan <laughs> Wright read from years ago as well, Mr. Jordan Wright. Hey. We just keep checking the the UFC board, see when they're going to have a fight, and pencil it in. It's your uh, Dustin Stoltzfus stimulus check every couple months. Uh, guy's not good, man. He's not good. People try to make him out to being what he's not. Uh, he's just not good. He's okay everywhere. You know, he was beating Gerald Mearshart and just makes error in the end. <laughs> Uh, the real disturbing thing, you called it, man. His path to victory was to wrestle Bruno Ferreira. He had everything that he possibly could have wanted to win that fight. He comes out swinging. He clips Ferreira. He takes him down. We're thinking, this is going to be Dustin. He's going to wear this guy out. All of a sudden, they're back on the feet, and you're thinking, how the hell did he let him get up? You're supposed to have this big, massive advantage. Um Mark Andre Barrio is way better, <laughs> way yeah. better than Dustin Solsvitz. Uh He's not going to get taken down, and if he does, he's going to make Solsvitz work. He'll get back to his feet. Um, I think this is Mark Andre all day long. Always been a fan of Mark Andre. He just he's a grinder, man. He'll he'll just stay on you and just keep grinding and grinding away. And he just fights through a lot. That knockout against Piper just he got clipped. It Hit him happened. right on like the top, the side of the head. This wasn't like where he dropped his hands like an idiot and caught a count. I went back mm-hmm. and watched it. It was a very strange. Yeah. We were knockout. shocked too. Like it was like, whoa, what yeah. what just happened? Um, the knockout against Chitty, that was a wild knockout. It says overhand the ground strikes, but let's not forget about the giant knee that hit him in the face mm-hmm. the first yeah. time. They left that uh, Fluffy does what Fluffy does. Other than that, this guy is just a juggernaut. So I love him in this spot. I think he's going to end up getting Stolzfist out of here. I know he's not a big finisher, but you get plenty of finishing upside from Dustin. So I will take Mon- Mark Andre Barrio by probably finish round two, round three submission. Agree. Kyle Machado and Brenson Ribeiro. Did you see what Kyle Machado looks like? He's been drinking that cayenne pepper water that Aaron Rodgers I guess so. has been. What? 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 What happened to Kyle Machado? He's not a heavyweight know. anymore. He's a shredded uh, light heavyweight. What's your take on this? Oh, fight? this is red flags up, down, left, and right. This fight. I'm <laughs> okay. not going anywhere near this fight. I'm not going in a distance prop. I'm staying so far away from this fight. I have to see what's going to happen. I have to see. Uh, we've been on Riberio. You would think this would be like a clear cut under one and a half, but we've seen these guys go over one and a half. 
So, I mean, do you hold your nose and take the fight to go the distance? I can't trust the weight class drop. I don't think Riberio's that good. It's just on and on and on. Red flag, red flag, red flag. So I have no bets on this fight. I suggest that nobody bet this fight. Yeah, I I think I'm probably with you uh, on this one. Um, I was trying to look up the photo, but you, you guys will all see it. Yeah, so, I mean, Kyle, you're, you're right that it's just too dangerous because Kyle Mikado – Beats Kevin Sflarsky. He was awful. Beats mm-hmm. Mick Parkin in a horrible fight. You can make the case that Parkin won. Dante Almeida loses too, or uh, you could make the case that 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 yes, you could make the case that Mick Parkin could have won that fight. Dante Almeida was awful. So you're looking at this guy and you're going, okay, he's low volume, bad, like but he can't even beat the lower level guys. But now you have Brinson Ribeiro, who the, I can't I I can't stress enough here. How bad this loss oh, is so to Magamod Gadzi Lua. Yeah. Like, I can't stress to you mm-hmm. how bad that is. This Magomed is awful. Yes. Um, it's like one of the only times that Brent's is it the only time Brent Ribeiro has gone the distance? Uh okay, he's he's gone way back when. Yeah. Um, but Brent Ribeiro is typically a gas bag. He's he's you know has has big power, but he knocks out Bruno Lopez as a big underdog. It turns out that win wasn't that. Uh, it, it turns out Bruno Lopez should never have been that big of a favorite. Then he just loses to two, I don't know, kind of bums in the UFC. But then you got Kyle Machado and you're like, why were you that big? And now all of a sudden you're you're this small. So I'm with you uh, that this is too too tough. I, I, I got to tell you, man, I think Brenton Ribeiro is awful. I would take He's just about bad. I would I would take just about anybody over him. So I will take Kyle Machado and maybe the weight cut will help his cardio big time. But I, I don't see Brenton Ribeiro doing anything outside of the first two. He's got to get a knockout in the first couple of minutes, but I just don't see it. I, I Brenton Ribeiro is a fade or nothing for me. I I mean he, he had uh, I, I'm not even gonna try to pronounce his last opponent. He had his leg so broken in the first round, you possibly could have a leg after kicking it. Yeah. And just could not stop it. Take down, could not stand his feet. Managed to land two or three more leg kicks over 10 minutes to end the fight. That leg was cooked. So, yeah. yes, I agree. He's bad. I just, with this weight drop, really, I'm okay with passing it up. And okay. if Kyle looks great, I will be on Kyle the next fight. We'll Love see. it. A uh, fascinating fight here with Derek Lewis and uh, is it is it Dins Denise? How do we? I, I I've I've heard too many people. I've, I've heard Denise. All right, let's go I've with Denise Dins. for the purposes of let's this video. I've heard it both ways. If I'm mispronouncing it, mm-hmm. I'm sorry. Uh, man, we are just like we cannot wait to beat this guy. You want to talk mm-hmm. about some suspect wins? This Eduardo Neves was terrible. He was mm-hmm. he looked awful. Austin Lane did his Austin Lane thing where he got knocked out. Carl Williams, this was the ultimate. Somebody got in Carl. Mm -hmm. I I don't know. I don't know if UFC did it (laughs) or whatever. But Carl Williams, I mean, talk about like not using what guy. Carl Williams is an all-world wrestler and decided tonight's the night. (laughs) I'm going to be a striker. And oh, was he not a striker. And um, so what do we see from Denise? Was he wins? a striking fight against the guy who's not a striker. Mm-hmm. It wasn't that dominant. He clocked Williams one time in the third and Williams <laughs> snaps out of it. It's yeah. like a fucking taking this guy down <laughs> and, and gets him down. No problem. Yep. Um, it was, it yeah, worked him for two minutes. Like, what him. are you doing? Yeah. You could have, you could have finished this guy in the first round. So Denise has all kinds of red flags mm-hmm. all over the place. Derek Lewis, uh, we kind of know what he is at this point. Uh, do you think this is uh, a Derek Lewis chance uh, to get a knockout? This really all depends on the numbers. Uh, this is most certainly is a Derek Lewis by finish chance because that's how Derek <laughs> Lewis yeah, wins. wins. So, yeah. I mean, there's no other. I'm, I'm not taking Derek to win a decision. Uh, that's a fact. The thing with Derek Lewis is, especially at this point in his career, and we've seen it, is it's, listen, if it's my night, great. If it's not my night, I'm taking my ball and I'm going home. 
it's been very, very obvious. This Jelton Almeida decision, that was one of those spots we talk about where it's just Jelton getting cage time, getting cage time. Don't tell me he couldn't have ended that fight at any time because he could have. Okay. Nasimento, this goes into round three, but look how it ends. At some point, Derek is going to be Derek. Okay. And you're not going to see any takedowns coming from Dince. I actually think we might see a takedown from Derek Lewis in this fight. You stole my thunder. I love oh, you. I, lo- no. I, lo- I love you for what you just said. Go ahead. Love it. Hit it. Tell us why. Well, D- Derek Lewis has ground and pound. Mm-hmm. If Derek Lewis gets on top of Dince, it's over. I'm yes. sorry. It's just over. And Derek Lewis has a perfectly good get up game. He's he's not great on the ground, but on top, he's a menace. And that ground yes. and pound is nothing you want anything to do with. The path of least, least resistance for Derek Lewis. It could be to stand and knock him out or just take this man down. Carl Williams took him down. I, no will. problem. No problem. Can 39-year-old Derek Lewis do it? Absolutely. Yes. If he's motivated enough to go for it early, I would not be surprised to see a Derek Lewis win by ground and pound. I really wouldn't. Now tell me he's not going to shoot a takedown after two leg kicks from Dins as well. Yeah, yeah, he'll he'll clinch, like, he'll, he'll push him up against this. fence, he'll try and uh, get him down. Yeah, yeah. Derek Lewis is not in the business of, of trading leg kicks. <laughs> I, I don't do leg kicks career. anymore. Yeah, he <laughs> has. <laughs> I really enjoyed them. Let's also say that. Yeah. Um, you know, the other thing is, is we saw Dince lost on the ground. I mean, gasping for air, laying on his back, <laughs> no sweeps available, closed guard. So, yeah, I think this is a chance that Derek could get a finish. I also could see Derek quit. So, I, I, you know, this I, as fight doesn't go the distance, I think is one of the best parlay pieces on this card. This is a, one of the few fights where I really believe it's just a Derek Lewis fight and it's not going to see the scorecards. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Rose, uh, Nami Yunus and Aaron Blanchfield, you're fascinated by this fight. So am I, but you seem really, really interested in this one. I'm sure you've done your research. What do, <laughs> do you, did you come away with a definitive like pick on this one? I know what I want to do. I haven't done it yet. <laughs> okay. Walk um, us through it. I, I struggle with this. Yeah. So a uh, big, big fan of, of both of these ladies. Um, always been a fan of Rose, not a super fan of Rose at this point in her career. Now we've made really good money on Rose in her return fights, really good money in these, uh, the Tracy Cortez fight, uh, talk about going back and wishing that we put triple what we did on. Yeah. That was a landslide. Um, the Reboss fight. We knew it again. We have a great read on Amanda Reboss, the man on Firo. I knew that was going to be a tough one. Like that's just tough. That's a tough matchup. Broken finger, broke the finger. we liked it. She was doing good till then, but, We're getting to the point where we're not seeing the same rows that we saw. Um, There's not a desire for violence. It's more of a point fighting, elusive, not get beat up. And can you blame her? She's been doing this forever. I wouldn't want to get my face messed up either. Here's what I have not found out yet. And when I find this out, I'll have my bet. I need to see what changes Erin Blanchfield made. Both of these ladies are not going to make changes and improvements. The improvements are only going to be coming from the Aaron Blanchfield side. Rose is what she is at this point. She can say all she wants that she's getting better. Oh, she said it to my trainers and I'm getting better. She's still training out of her garage with Pat Berry, her own little small little gym. There's nobody there pushing her. Rose is a finished product. Aaron suffers the biggest setback of her career. One fight away from a title. It is what it is. Now, how does she respond? I know that she went back in the gym quickly. She had let herself heal up and went right back in the gym. But I need to see a body transformation from Aaron Blanchfield. I need to see the baby fat go away. We saw this with Macy Barber when she Mm. was going on her run. She all of a sudden came out and you're like, damn, like Macy's been doing strength training. She had shoulders. She had some bigger arms. Um, I want to see a physicality difference from Erin because she has to realize that if she cannot get these fights to the ground, she's in trouble. She's not going to fight for a title. She has to wrestle to get to her jujitsu. So I'm going to wait till I see Erin on the scale. I'm going to get whatever information I can, but I'm looking to back Erin Blanchfield in this fight. 
especially the fact that it's a five round fight. And we just saw, we had the question answered. We know Aaron can take an ass kicking for five rounds. <laughs> <laughs> we know she is not going to get hit harder than she got hot by Fiero from Rose. Rose just does not hit hard anymore. So I'm looking to bet Aaron in this spot. Fight goes the distance. I don't care who wins. <laughs> this has distance written all over it. Like you said, Rose is not in the business of either trying to, you know, knock somebody out or get knocked out herself. And it's more of, I, I like, I don't want to get finished. I'm a point fighter. I like at this level is Blanchfield finishing. I mean, I listen, great, great finish against Andrade. Molly McCann, you know, has been, <laughs> you can submit, but Tyler Santos and Firo going to decision. I worry about this is this is really silly. I worry that Blanchfield loses a round every fight when her nose gets cut because mm, her nose always true. gets cut. No, it's a great point. It's not silly. It, it's, it's 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 like she's almost down half a round because mm -hmm. if it's a close round <laughs> and the bell rings and the two women turn around and one of them's got blood coming down, that is enough for judges to give Blanchfield um, that round. I don't think her striking looked that great against Fiero. Um, in fact, I thought it was. It's like, not only does it not look great, it really didn't scare anybody mm -hmm. um, with it. Now, Firo, I, I thought Firo kind of was working really hard to manage the cardio. Um, I, I lean ever so slight with Rose, but the, the bet the bet for me is just this fight to go the distance. I, like, who's Rose is good on the ground, but Rose isn't submitting Blanchfield. I see, I see no. no no path to any submissions outside of something outrageous. And so then it comes down to knockout. Rose is not in the knockout business, uh -uh. you know, anymore. I don't think Blanchfield can even get close to knocking out Rose. I think this is two ladies managing their cardio. Very, very close decision. And I take it to go the distance. That's by far the only way that, that I would, I would play that. So uh, we're going to get to the main event. Just want to remind everybody on uh, the plays we have up 5% UFC play 5% college football play of the week, promo code Andy three Gets you a three-day pass for $39. If you guys take your bankroll serious like a business and you're watching this video, so I know that you do, um, we're trying to do as many uh, promos as possible, but on a weekend like this, three-day pass is really important. We get, we're 10 and 4 in the month of October in NFL plays. You get all those. You get these two 5% plays included. You get uh, just any other plays we may add in for UFC. So it's a fantastic promo. NBA and NHL could not have been going better. We're 6 and 1 already to start the week. And don't forget, we got Formula One plays. So tons of action for this weekend uh, to build the bankroll. So $39, it's a no-brainer. Go ahead and grab that. Uh, we always like to to uh, do full transparency, tell everyone what our units are up to speed this year. 482 wins, 311 lo uh, losses for 161 units. We are closing in on that plus 175. Uh, it's coming. It's coming. 8.7% ROI, uh, which is just fantastic ROI. I was looking 5% is a good ROI. 7% is great. So sitting at 8.7% is Music to my ears, Jim. <laughs> it really is. So, all right, let's talk the main event. Brandon Moreno. Then we're going to do woulda, coulda, shoulda, and our parlay buster. Moreno and Albazi. Who you got? New guard. That's what I got. Okay. You have to take, again, he is not the same fighter that we all know and love. We just not. Amir Albazi is hungry. I understand that he's coming off of surgeries, neck surgeries. I believe he had shoulder surgery as well. Um, but this guy wants the title, man. Like, it, it, this isn't just a, oh, shucks, I get to fight Brandon Moreno, oh, one of my heroes. No, no. He knows that his chance is now. He's ranked fifth in the world. This is the lowest that Moreno's been ranked in years. Okay? This is two ships crossing in the night. And I cannot, especially after hearing the darkness that Moreno went in. Here's the big problem that I see. Moreno flat out said, after his last fight, I need to take the rest of the year off. Guess what? It's not 2025 yet. So what's he doing here? Why is he here? If you thought you had to take a year, and I understand you could go back and, and maybe decide that you're you're hungry again and you want this, but... That feeling post-fight where you said you need to wait until next year, that was the best thing for you, my friend. You should have waited till next year. I think this is too much, too soon, after the wars that he's been in, to come back and fight new blood. And 
Albazi is coming for him. He's not going to get in there and have this shock and respect factor of, like, oh, my gosh, that's Brandon Moreno. He wants to hang his hat on this and get himself the next title shot. So, again, two ships crossing in the night. I will very gladly take Almir Albazi to beat Brandon Moreno. I know Moreno's going to be a popular pick. He always is. To me, that you're not going to get a discount on Brandon Moreno. I don't think you ever do. So, give me Almir, Almir Albazi. And before Andy says it as well, I'll take this to not to go the distance as well. I think this is another decision. Yeah, this is tough because when you just like if you just go, okay, let's just say that two guys that these two guys are fighting at what they should be fighting at. I mean, on paper, you would say Moreno's probably the better wrestler, longer reach, fought the better level of competition by a mile. Obazi's not going to do anything that he hasn't seen before. This guy's mm-hmm. gone to split decision against Pantoja and Roy Val in the last two fights. And you got Albazi who struggled to beat Kai Carr of France. So when you're Albazi's ground game, is that good enough to beat Moreno? Probably not. Like if, if these guys are fighting, you know, at the peak of their powers, Mm -hmm. um, you, you said it though, man, when has this ever gone? Well, when someone's like, I, I, I'm retiring. (laughs) Oh, I'm coming back early. When is, yep. when has that been a recipe for success to me? When, 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 when you, when you say I'm retiring, that was not a spur of the moment thing. That was something that was weighing on, on, on your mind. And I get it. Like some of these guys, like just look at, look at, this look at the amount of fights. That's what I mean. Look, look at like, just go, we'll start with 2020 <laughs> for me, Roy Val fig, fig, Big guy car of France, big Pantoja. It, it's been a gauntlet for him. So for him to say, like, I'm retiring. Oh, six months later, I'll be back. Your options or, or your the, the reasons that he would come back is. I, I found the hunger again. Mm-hmm. Which is or very I, low on my list. Very low on my list. Yeah. Or boy, this not fighting thing doesn't bring in a lot of money. Mm-hmm. And. It would be really, really nice to get another payday before the end of the year. And okay, I think I got a, I think I got a chance against El Bazi. Would he? Would, let me ask you that. Would he be fighting if they're like you got Roy Val again, or you got you know some other you know killer? Probably not. He'd be asking for it in January, February. He would probably yeah. be pushing mm-hmm. it back. So I, mm-hmm. th- for that reason alone, I can't take Moreno because his skill set should be better than El Bazi. But there's just a lot of things that are not in the stats. There's not in the film. And that's tr- what is this guy's motivation? Is his heart completely in it? And you just can't be on the side of a favorite who's like, what, minus 175, whose heart yeah. possibly could not be in it. When you know Albazi is like nothing to lose, round, man. Right? Nothing to lose. Albazi is nothing to lose. Nobody expects no. him to win this fight. Think about this, Jim. You, you We talked about Steve Urseg, like like moving up. Yeah. Three fights ago, this fight was fi- was fighting Figueroa and not the good one. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, true. Very true. The three fights ago, he was yep. fighting one of the worst guys that the that the UFC roster had to offer, and now he's in there. I I, I don't think you can overlook that. So if you are if you guys are betting on Brandon Moreno, I understand it. Mm-hmm. On paper, the skill set should be way better. The man, have your live bets ready to go yep. because. If that fight starts, I will tell you right now, if that fight starts and Moreno doesn't look locked in, you better be you better bet your behind. I am live betting on Albazi uh, over five rounds. So, and again, I'm with you. I'm with you hundred percent. Fight goes the distance. Um, so I said, what did I see that the U S they had a run over, over a few cards were 17 fights in a row went over two and a half. Yeah. 17, not shocking. 17. They had a couple finishes after the two and a half mark, but um, I feel bad for the guy who's like, this one has to end in yeah. some distance. <laughs> and then it loses the next one. This one has to has, end. Yeah. Distance. Well, yeah. now it's just got to happen. The Martin Gale system did not work that well. So, <laughs> all right, let's do woulda, coulda, shoulda. So the woulda, coulda, shoulda segment is where Jim and I look back on the fights after everything is said and done. We go, gosh, darn it. Why didn't we just lay the farm on that? Uh, do you have one picked out? Mm, I will go. You know what? Let's go back. I, I'm gonna. Where is he? All the way up. Give me Derek Lewis by knockout. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm sure it's plus money. So like that's a good you're gonna one. Give me. You're gonna give me Derek Lewis by knockout at plus money. 
the knockout king against against Nice. He's like yeah. ah, against Deans, who's been less than <laughs> yeah. I called my shot early. It's Jamie Lynn Horth uh, like against Petrovic. Petrovic is awful. Jamie Lynn Horth is going to be stronger. She's going to be motivated fighting in front of her hometown. And sometimes these lower level fights end up being having the biggest gap in difference. Um, so I'll, I'll go with Jamie Lynn Horth. All right, Parlay Buster. What's everyone putting in their parlays? It's going to absolutely smoke him. Well, it's got to be a Canadian, right? <laughs> it's got to yeah. be a Canadian. We're, we're in Canada. There's a okay. no bunch of Canadians. All right. So you got so Mark Andre Canadian. <laughs> All right. You got, well, it's a hobby. I doubt it's a hobby's in many people's parlays. A lot will be in people's parlays. Barriott mm-hmm. will be in par- people's parlays. Jasmine will 100% be in people's parlays. I don't mm-hmm. know about Jordan. Um, Chad and Heller, probably not. Jamie Lynn Horth, I can't imagine that's a big parlay piece. And then I got to believe that Moreno is a huge parlay piece. So, okay, so okay. That's what do you think if you're going the Canadian route? If I'm going the Canadian route, who's just going to murder everybody? <laughs> is it well, Mike I'm Malata? This way, Malata if, again if, would be. <laughs> if Malata again would be epic. That would be epic. And again, I'll say it again. Don't think I won't have my live lines open for that fight. Um, I got a guy coming off a four fight win streak and a guy who just can't buy himself a win. Eamon Zahabi will be a parlay buster. Oh, okay. All Four right. fight win streak. A lot of hype in Canada. <laughs> I think people are going to be looking to fade Pedro when they do their research and they see that the loss is adding up. And same thing we all said about him. And then you're going to realize you bet on his hobby. <laughs> oh man! All right. Uh, who do I think is going to be um, a parlay buster? I can't get there with Zalal. Um I'll go Brandon Moreno. Okay. I'll go Brandon Moreno. These main events on these fight nights can be very, very strange. And like anytime you have a five round fight with a guy going into potentially who may not be the most motivated fighter in the world. uh, If he looks bad in the first round, you're going to be absolutely terrified about, (laughs) about holding a Brandon Moreno ticket. So I got to, I get, we didn't, I I don't feel as great about this one as our Kyler Phillips pick. We, we absolutely smoked smoked that Kyler Phillips one. So I, I I don't have the level of confidence this week that, that what we did with, with Kyler Phillips. So, Mm -hmm. All right, guys, that's going to do it for hit the like button. Don't forget the uh, random four letter word to put in the comment section is lose. Oh, what a curse. But, We'll see if we can break through the. Uh, <laughs> all right, like guys. That. That's, it's fun. Uh, it's pretty fun. It's pretty fun. So, all right, guys. That's going to do it for us. Good luck in your plays, and we'll see everyone later. Bye. See you later.